Hi there, Lewis Clifford here, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, list building. Uh, one of the most fundamental uh, things that you need to do, or any business needs to do, not just an online business. Uh, you need to have an email list, build a list of uh, customers, uh, and build a relationship with that customers. And this is one of a number of videos I'm going to be doing on this subject because it is so, so crucial. And um, today I'm going to be talking about how I virtually scrapped one of my major key lists and why I did it. I mean, I didn't scrap it completely, but I, I, I culled it. I took an axe to it and I chopped it down, this list, to a very small number. And I'm going to tell you why I did that and really look at the importance of quality over quantity. So um, buckle up. I hope you had an awesome day. Uh, I'm going to give you some content right now. So here we go. So as I've um, said on a number of occasions, and I'm going to be saying quite a lot over uh, the next sort of few videos on this um, subject matter, building a list is crucial for any business, whether it's an online business or an offline business. Having a website is not enough. I can show you how to build a fantastic website if you're brand new to it and, and, and build a fantastic looking WordPress site. I can show you that, but that alone is not enough. But I can also show you how to build a list. And that is really important. You need, you need a website and you need to be able to capture people who come to that website in terms of their email contact, their names and their contact details so that you can build a relationship with that list. So back to my list. Why did I then radically decide to scrap my list or 80% or of my list? So a couple of things happened to me. Um, I use an autoresponder. So that's the, the way that the emails are sort of sent out and you can schedule the emails to be sent out to your big list and uh, I used to use GetResponse, very good, don't have a problem with them um, and they suffered a catastrophic uh, massive spam attack from a malicious spam attack which basically took them offline. Um, they weren't unique in this, this happened to other autoresponders uh, previously as well, I contact Aweber and it's a way that these um, um, hackers and um, sort of spam spam attack people can sort of blackmail companies. Um, anyway, they, it, it basically meant that Get Response was um, offline for a week, so I didn't get any new subscribers added to my list, and I couldn't send out any of my scheduled emails, uh, which was a real pain because I was right in the middle of a big product launch. Now, you know, as many of you know, as some of you are on one of my lists, uh, um, and I hope you appreciate the content and the, and the stuff that I, I kind of put your way. Um, I had a list of you know several thousand uh, doing very well, earning some good money on that list. Um, but I did have my suspicions about the quality of that list, but I was quite happy getting you know 10 to 20 subscribers every day from natural free traffic, free traffic methods that I teach uh, and I've taught and I teach on the Internet Marketing Bootcamp. Uh, there's a link down below for that of course, uh, that I've taught and uh, quite happy with that. But after this, uh, after Get Response, they came back online, um, they came to me and they said, you know, your list is looking a bit fatigued and you've got 2,000 blacklisted emails on there. And I thought, Black, blacklisted emails, what does that, what's that actually mean? And basically, all it means is that uh, email addresses, which historically um, have been known or recognized as being potentially spammy addresses. So basically I was getting no uh, response and I always wondered why my conversion rates were very 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 small. Um, and this made me also uh, look at my list because I noticed that some of the people who subscribed and registered to, for the free training in the Internet Marketing Bootcamp, that the usernames they created looked a bit sort of auto-generated and that raised my suspicions as well but I carried on collecting them. I'm adding them to my list, feeling proud that my list was, was in the thousands and growing and, and what a fantastic list building exercise I'd undertaken. And of course I'm paying for the size of that list on GetResponse. So all of these things made me kind of revisit my list. And when GetResponse told me about these blacklisted um, email addresses, they asked whether I wanted to get rid of them and I said yes and they said there's 2,000 of them and I thought whoa! That is a lot on my list, but hey, do it. Let's do it. And at the same time, I thought I'm going to try out Aweber. I just was using it as an opportunity to, to try something else. 
uh, and Aweber fitted in with, with some software that I'm using as well. So I downloaded the remainder of my list from GetResponse, I uploaded it to Aweber, and in doing so, Aweber, um, all the people on that list, they had to resubscribe. So I used it as an opportunity to refresh my list because my list had got what we call list fatigue where people have just stopped opening your emails. So every so often it's sometimes important to spring clean your list and, and maybe send out an email with, with some kind of content or a special offer or something to download on the basis that you, you know, want to see if they're still interested in stuff and would they resubscribe to your list and if they resubscribe to the list then they can get you know, this free download or something or free content. Um, and it's something you need to be doing on a regular basis just to keep your list fresh and up to date. And one thing I noticed is that my income, despite my email list dropping down radically, remained fairly consistent. So my income from my email list remained fairly consistent even though my email list had been chopped down nearly 80%, 80% at least. And this got me thinking about something, uh, a theory, an economic theory uh, called the Pareto, Pareto Principle, which is the 80-20 theory. And this is a theory developed by an Italian economist. Uh, you don't have to worry about all of this, I'm just giving you a bit of background. That basically said that 80% of a country's wealth, 80% of a country's wealth is owned by just 20% of the people. Um, and this was really to demonstrate this sort of unfairness of capitalism. I'm not going to go into all of that anyway. But this 80-20 principle, it turns out, can be applied to many things in business and many things in life. And what I realised is that the majority of my income generated, so my 80%, was coming from just 20% of my list. So that got me thinking, surely it's better to concentrate on that 20% that are generating you the 80%, so you're not paying for having the other 80% of people who are on your list a, a, a lot of which, a high percentage of that, is just junk. And this tapped into something I read in a book called The 4-Hour Week. Many of you may know this book. It's called The 4-Hour Week by Tim Ferriss. I'll leave a link for you down uh, in the details below on Amazon or whatever. Uh, it's called The 4-Hour Week. And in that, he talks about how um, he chopped down his, his sort of customers because he realised that 20, you know, most of his wealth was coming from a very small amount of customers and a lot of his workload, having to deal with customers who were difficult but weren't generating much money, um, was concentrated on a larger amount of people. So he thought, you know, get rid of the people who are wasting your time, concentrate on the, on the, on the people who genuinely want to build a relationship with you and, you know, a customer business relationship with you and want to buy your products or services or are interested in what you, your content that you have, have to deliver. And that got me thinking about my whole email list, list building approach. And, and that's why I'm radically changing it. So I've, I've changed the way that people get access to the Internet Marketing Bootcamp now. You have to subscribe to the list before you can um, get register for access. Now that way, if you're not really interested in being on my list, then you're not going to subscribe, you don't get access. But I know, therefore, that you're, if you do subscribe, the quality of that sub subscriber is going to be much better than if they're just automatically subscribed to a list. Um, so I've changed that. Um, so my list now is at least 80%, if not greater, in terms of smaller than it was. I'm still getting um, maybe five, five to ten, maybe five, uh, new signups every day, not a lot, but it's not like the 10 to 15 I was getting, or maybe 20 I was getting, but based on at least 15 of those were just junk emails anyway, um, that's better. I'm not having to pay for a massive list, which has um, only earned me the same amount of money that my smaller list is earning, because my smaller list is, is, is more quality. I look at the type of content that my list is wanting and responds to, and therefore try to find products or create content that suits them because if it suits them it's going to suit other people and that will build my list with more quality um, uh, customers and uh, subscribers. So 
what this what does all this mean? What's what's this kind of all about? So as I say, at the end of the day, when you're building a list, it's about the quality of that list, not the quantity. Do not be um, sucked in by the rush to get quantity. Quantity is pointless if there's no quality in that list. Concentrate on the quality. And to get the quality, offer quality content, offer quality um, offers or downloads or, or, you know, or memberships or whatever it is you want. Offer something that people generally want and will go that little extra effort. They'll go to their email inbox when they, when they put their email address into a little opt-in box. And they'll go, yes, I want to subscribe to that list. Um, that they'll want, every time they get an email from you, they'll want to open that email because previously emails they've been got from you have got really good co um, content, valuable content, something worth reading about, something worth watching, etc., etc. And that's how you should build your customer list. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Build your customer list focusing on the quality of that list, not the quantity. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you're not a member of the Internet Marketing Bootcamp, then uh, you can join in the link below. I'm gonna have a lot more stuff about building a list and creating sites as well, because I'm building a brand new course. More of that in the future. Um, thank you for listening. Any questions, let me know. Drop me a line uh, at the usual details. I'll leave them all, all below. Thank you.